okay so today we are going to discuss our our final objective of this lecture is to understand different types of attenuators so we'll be discussing we'll we will be stating what an attenuator is and then uh, we will uh, look at a different type of isolators and then we look at different type of circulators okay so attenuation attenuation as the name indicates it is it is attenuator is a device which is used to reduce a some parameter of the input so it can be amplitude it can be frequency it can be any type of parameter but normally we use we say attenuator is something that is used to reduce its power a attenuation why do we need an attenuation so the basic uh, necessity of using an attenuator oh. is to prevent the saturation for example let's say you take a your usual electronic circuits uh, let's say you have an op amp and op amp let's say it is supplied with 15 volt input Plus or minus 15 volt so power supply. Let's say you have a gain of uh, let's say 100 or something, and you give a signal of what? One volt. So ideally, you will should be able to get you should be able to get an output of 100 volts, which is not possible because the power supply is 15 volt. So the top of so the basically the output is cut off at 15 volt. That means your signal is distorted. So you don't want such things to happen so what you do is you will reduce the input signal so that you will achieve an desired output and the device which is used to attenuate is called as the attenuator the function of optical attenuator is to decrease the light intensity so here we are dealing with optics and so the attenuation is going to happen to optical power basically the intensity of the like these are used in several applications like in receiver to prevent its saturation due to strong intensity input signal so when the input signal is saturated that means it is just cut off then the problem is basically your signal itself is distorted then you won't be able to retrieve back what the information is passed through that signal so it is necessary that you should have enough gain but you should be able to retrieve back the complete signal so to do that we will use an attenuator the first type of attenuator is called as an absorption attenuator so you see there is a fiber in the left hand side and there is a fiber on the right hand side and there is a small disk so by so when the light wave passes through the fiber through the disk because of this disk there will be attenuation of the light intensity now you can control the attenuation by rotating the disk depending on how much you are rotating you can create different levels of attenuation for example if you rotate the disk by 45 degree you might be able to create an attenuation of let's say 2 db or something and if you rotate it again for another 15 degree you might be able to create an attenuation of 3 db something like that so by rotating the disk basically the disk absorbs the light and this is called as absorption attenuator the next type of attenuator is with axial and long tunnel gaps so you see that there is a gap here and when the light passes through it you see that because of this gap some of the light will get scattered the intensity of the light reaching the next fiber on the right hand side will decrease so this is axial attenuation similarly you can have long tunnel gaps instead of horizontal gap you can have vertical gaps so these are the axial and longitudinal gap attenuators and uh, so this is another uh, attenuator with longitudinal optical attenuator with longitudinal gap where you see that uh, you have the fiber which is having the light source uh, and there's a receive fiber which is receiving the light source and again because of this gap the intensity of the light or the light will get scattered in this area and the light entering the right hand side fiber will be of very low value this is called as longitudinal gap attenuator so these are the different types of attenuators next there is something called as an isolator now why again what is an isolator and why do we need an isolator okay 
the performance of certain fiber optic communication systems can be severely degraded if part of the launched power is reflected back towards the source. So there is something called as a matching in whatever circuits, whether it is optical circuits, whether it is uh, electromagnetic circuit, whether it is uh, your normal uh, current voltage circuits, wherever, whatever circuits you use, there is always called as a matching. That means the impedance of input should always match with the impedance of output. Now, if there is a mismatch happening, then the problem is the power transferred will not be the maximum. There will be some amount of reflection coming back to the source. This reflection will create a problem in the source. It might damage the source. So it is, it is an utmost necessity that we should be able to reduce the amount of reflected power. And Isolators are a way of doing, or isolators are such devices which you can use inside your circuits to prevent the reflection. So to prevent such undesired reflections, optical isolators are placed immediately after the sensitive device or source. So the commercially available optical isolators make use of non-reciprocal nature of Faraday effect which changes the state of polarization of the incident fields in the presence of magnetic field parallel to the direction of propagation. So usually the optical isolators make use of this Faraday effect. Okay, And non-reciprocal property of Faraday effect. What do you mean by non-reciprocal property? Let's say you have a, some kind of a device. And let's say it is a non-reciprocal device. That means if you pass input from the left hand side and get the output if you pass the same input from the left hand right hand side you will get the same output so if the x1 is the input on the left hand side you will get output as y1 on the right hand side if you pass x1 you should get output as y1 this is reciprocity reciprocal device now faraday effect devices are non reciprocal which means that if you have a Faraday device or device which causes Faraday effect. If you pass an input from the left hand side, let's say this is X1, and you get an output Y1. Now, if you give the same input X1 on the right hand side, you might not be getting Y1. You might both be getting something like Z1. So this is a non-reciprocal device. Okay. And the Faraday effect is what is mentioned in the description. It says that if you apply a magnetic field parallel to the direction of propagation, then there is a change in the polarization of the light. Okay, That means, let's say the light has something like this, a vertical polarization. Okay? I hope you know what a polarization is. This is a vertical polarization. Okay, Now, the light is passed through some device which applies some kind of a magnetic field. Now, when the light passes through this device, the polarization of this device will be changed. So instead of having this vertical polarization, it might be possible that by configuring this device, you can have the output having a horizontal polarization. Okay, so this is called as a Faraday effect. Now it is, you can have devices which can make the polarization of your choice. So for example, in this case, I chose a material which creates vertical to horizontal. You can tilt or change the polarization by any degrees using this Faraday effect. So we'll see in the next few slides how it is done. So this is an uh, isolator in which the light is traveling from the forward direction. That means you have the light input from here on the left hand side. There's a lens which we, to focus. And there's a zero degree polarizer. So, uh, so let's say the incident polarization is vertical. Okay. So this is zero degree polarization, uh, which means that if the vertical polarization is incident on this polarization polarizer, it will just allow it to pass, and it will not allow any other polarization to pass. Now there's a Faraday rotator. It's a 45 degree Faraday rotator. So whatever vert vertical polarized light passes through this Faraday rotator, it will tilt the polarization by 45 degree. So you will have a 45 degree tilted polarized light. There is a 45 degree polarizer, which means 
if the light is tilted by 45 degree the polarizer will allow the light to pass through it so we'll have the output 45 degree polarizer and then you have the uh, lens again and it will be focused inside the fiber and you can get the output as a as the light so here what we did was we have input from the left hand side and the output from the right hand side okay now let's see what happens if you give from the left hand right hand side and get the output from the right uh, left hand side okay so here let's read it from the right let's say you give the input here okay let's assume that the light will have all levels of polarizer like a circular polarized light now there is a 45 degree polarizer which means only those light who has 45 degree inclined polarization will pass through it okay now when uh, it passes through the faraday rotator now this is actually a non reciprocal device this is not a reciprocal device. this is a non reciprocal so whatever polarization it is having or whatever tilt it causes when you travel from left to right is not the same tilt it will cause from right to left okay so it might tilt by another different angle let's say this is 90 degree so when it passes through the zero degree polarizer zero degree polarizer will only allow vertical polarization now this happens to be a horizontal polarized light so it will not allow the horizontal polarized light and you will not get any output thus you have prevented the you are, you have allowed only one direction of light to propagate through this whole channel if the light is incident on the left hand side then it will be able to propagate if the light is incident on the right hand side it will not be allowed to propagate so that is isolated this is an isolator so there is another type of polarization or isolator called as polarization independent isolator so basically what we will have is a bifurcation wedge as a faraday rotator and at the end also there is a bifurcation wedge so what it does is let's say your light is incident on this wedge now it will split into two rays one is called as an ordinary ray and one is called as an extraordinary ray so which has like horizontal and vertical polarization now it will get uh, incident on the faraday rotator the faraday rotator will create a 45 degree tilt to the uh, ordinary and extraordinary ray it will out it will come out of the faraday rotator it will come to the next wedge now the next wedge will make the uh, tilt 45 degree tilt of ordinary ray to zero degree and the 45 degree tilt of extraordinary ray also to the zero degree so basically you have retrieved back your vertical and horizontal polarized light so which will be combined inside the wedge and you will get the output okay but let's say you give the input from the left hand side right hand side so again this wedge will create vertical and horizontal polarization or some kind of polarization which will split the rays it will go to the faraday rotator again 45 degree 45 degree angle will be there but here when it emerges out of the wedge sorry uh, in the faraday rotator it will create a different type of uh, rotation because you are now uh, having the input on the right hand side and it will come out of faraday rotator once it reaches the wedge on the left hand side now instead of you see that the polarization here is zero but here this is vertical so the amount of refraction or amount of divergence of these two rays will be different at the left hand side so they will diverge out instead of combining and come out okay so in this case you see they will diverge or they will refract to combine both the rays to come out but in this case they will not combine they will diverge and come out so you see that the input if you give input from the left hand side you will get an output but if you give the same input from the right hand side you will get a different output so this is another kind of isolator now there is a polarization dependent isolator and this block is a polarization dependent isolator okay the mechanism is almost same that you give an input uh, this is actually a wedge it, it will split into extraordinary and ordinary ray 
and uh, then it will go through us the isolator which is polarization dependent so depending on the polarization you will be able to uh, uh, pass the light through this isolator it will get combined this wedge and comes out but if you do in the reverse way now this will not allow the light to pass from right to left okay only the light which is passing from left to right will be passed through the isolator if it comes from right to left this will block the light so that means it is isolated this is called as a polarization dependent isolator next is called as circulators so circulator is a device in which if you give an input to one port you can get the output on the next if you give the input to the next port you will get you'll get the output on the next and it can circulate for example if you give input to the port 1 you you can get the output from port 2 if you give the input at port 2 you can get the output at port 3 if you get the give the input at port 3 you will get the output at port 1 so basically this is something like a circle and this is called as a circulator okay so the circulator can be actually be kind of an isolator because you you give input at one port you will get the output at other and you won't, if you give input at the other port, you will not be getting your output at the same port, but it will be at a different port. So it's an optical isolator. So this is a polarization independent circulator. So we'll see in the next few slides to break this up and understand. So you have port 1 here, port 3 here, port 2 here, and port 4 here. OK, there's a prism, there's a beam splitter, there's a rotator 45 degree, which is consists of actually two of them. Actually, they are of uh, Faraday uh, effect rotators. And then you have the light traveling back and forth in all the directions. Now, this is a kind of a circulator because if, even if you give an input at port 1, you will get the output at port 2. If you give an input at port 2, you will get the output at port 3. If you give an input at port 3, you will get the output at port 4. Okay? This is the circulator. Now, if you analyze this step by step, what happens is, let's say you are giving the input at port 1. Now, the this is called as a bifurcation wall of block. Now, it will split this into two rays. One is ordinary and extraordinary ray. Now, the there's a fader rotator and the uh, face rotation plate in between. So, this will create a 45 degree clockwise tilt for both the rays. And it will get combined at the wall of block, which is B, and get the output at port 2. Now, let's say you are giving the input at port 2. Now, when you give the input at port 2, since this is a wall of block by Fringen, it will separate it into ordinary and extraordinary rays. Now, again, Faraday rotator is a non-reciprocal device. So when it creates, when it moves from the left through the Faraday rotator, the amount of uh, change or rotation is different for both the ordinary and extraordinary ray. And once it gets into the A block of bifurcation wall of block, instead of combining at A, both will get diverged. Okay, And then there's a prism which will be able to reflect it back to the ordinary ray to combine them to create output at port 3. So now, when you give gave the input at port 2, you are getting the output at port 3, okay, instead of port 1. That is because of the difference in polarization caused by the Faraday rotator when you give the input from the left-hand side and from the right-hand side, okay. So here, the main thing is here, instead of combining these two rays, the rays will be getting diverged. If it was combining, then it would have come directly through port 1. But instead, it will just diverge. The last topic is polarization dependent circulator. So here it is a uh, circulator which depends on polarization. Again, there is a Faraday rotator. So there is a prism. So uh, you can give the light from 1. And uh, depending on the polarization, uh, the Faraday rotator will be able to change its polarization. And if you give input from 1, the Faraday rotator will change the polarization, gives the output to 2. 
if the if you give the input from 2 it will get the output at 3 if you give the input at 3 you get the output at 4 so this is a polarization dependent circuit okay so i think that's all it's a very small topic i don't want to stress much on this um uh, i'll give some notes for this also so make sure you read through that and i am going to post an assignment uh, from module number 5 uh, uh, i'll give the notes to that assignment it's a very big notes so you read through the notes and you write the assignment okay so i'm going to give a note to you i'm going to give a note to you note to you to add it concise briefly you should write in one or two pages i will say in that assignment how many pages you want to write so you can submit it after the christmas vacation okay so that part i haven't taken in the class but make sure you read through it and uh, make it brief keep it in two pages and submit okay so ad ningalku njan a note therunna kaaranam ningalku ningal oru thoru ezhudunna aa oru briefness ellarum different aayirikkum so make sure you do it yourself otherwise it is easy for me to find out whether you have copied or not okay so i'll give that assignment and uh, maybe i'll post it by this weekend or something okay so you can submit it by 28th or something when you once you come back okay fine so we have maybe two more classes by which to before which we can finish our course um so yeah so i'll post the notes for this also and uh, uh you can submit the assignment also okay so let me just to take that in hands okay uh idil 36 aakar undu i think everybody is present let me just see okay i think everybody is there so i'll give that to us okay so thank you for listening um so we'll meet on friday thank you